last eight years I've been video editing with Premiere Pro, but two years ago I switched to DaVinci Resolve. What I really love about the program is that for every task, such as editing, color grading, motion, you have your own workspace where you can focus on just the task ahead and not be distracted by something else. Something else which is great about the program is that the color grading is node based. So for every effect you have a different node. But let me show it and also show what my workflow is in the program and hopefully you can learn something. Okay, here we are in DaVinci. I already selected the shot I want to create. At the bottom you see the working tabs. You have Media, Cut, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight and Deliver. So Media is just a really clear overview of all your clips where you can select it and edit over here and then from there you can create a timeline. Then you have Cut and Edit. Then you have the last tab which is Deliver which is just for exporting. Go to your clip, right mouse, create new timeline using selected clips. Oil. You can open it and then you can edit it over here. But we're gonna go straight into the color grading. So we go to the color grading tab. What I normally like to do is go to your hero shot. So, so the best moment in the clip you want to focus on when color grading. Like I said, you work with a node-based system in DaVinci. So here you have your nodes where you can add your effects on. So I'm gonna add a few nodes. For now I'm gonna start with four nodes. Uh, if you wanna create a new node, you can press Alt-S. So this shot is shot in S-Log with a Sony camera. It's S-Log 3 Cine and we need a Rec. 709 lid. What I normally did in Premiere Pro was using a Rec. 709 lid, but here you have something else which is called the Color Space Transform, which is better because you have way more settings to choose from and choose the right settings from the camera. I'm gonna go to the last note and then go to effects. If you don't see it, you can see it on the top of the screen on the right. Effects, then type in Color Space Transform, and drag the effect onto the last note. These are the four settings I normally change. Sony S Gamma 3 Cine. Input Gamma is S Log 3. And then output is Rec. 7, Rec 709. And for now we're gonna use the use timeline for the output Gamma, but I'm gonna show you something else after the first part of the video. And not to forget, name your notes because it can become really messy. So what I normally like to start with is the correction before I do anything after the Rec. 709 or Color Space Transform. This is the RGB scope over here and this is the scope I use most of the time. If I had to choose one scope I could use, it would be the RGB scope. If you cannot find it, um, it's, you can click over here and here you can see the different scopes. But for now I'm gonna use this one. In the shot you can see that there's still some space at the bottom. You can go a bit lower and there's a little bit too much red in the high end. But there's also just a lot of red in the footage. So that's quite normal that you see a little bit more red. So I'm gonna start by adding some blue to the to the mid lows. Dial up the temperature a bit, contrast. Then dial down the lift a bit. Now it's a bit too dark, so I'm gonna dial up the offset. Shot is already balanced quite well, so that makes it a lot easier. The only thing is that the subject is not really standing out because the red in the background is way too bright. The next note I'm gonna change the skin tones. Use a qualifier and select the skin tones. And when you select this tool, you can see the areas which it has selected. But the skin tones are 
goes to brown and red and there's a lot of brown and red in the background. So let's try to deselect some of it. Let's change the U. Now up the pre-filter, the denoise and the blur radius. Then select this tool again. Style up some mid detail. Just a bit of color boost, not too much. Now back to saturation a bit. This is how it looks right now and this is how it looked before. Okay, let's create a mask. Then you can go up here, click on this tool. And then create a mask around the face and a bit of the body. And then here you can dial up the feather. Most of the time I do that as much as possible. And then I dial back the gamma and invert the mask. Before and after. Okay, the chairs a little bit too red. Um, I selected the skin tones, which selected the skin tones and these chairs, but not these ones. So I can create an outer node, a right click, add node, add outside. So this is just selecting the outside, in this case the chairs. Then go to the color warper tool and here you can select the colors. And I just made it a bit darker. So this is just a basic color grading and to make it a little bit more filmic I like to add some film grain. So go to effects, type in film grain and add that to the node. And then I always love to use the 35mm for on T. And here you can dial up the size and here the strength. And then sometimes I like to use some halation. So new node Alt S, then go to effects, type in halation and direct it to the last node. I will just do a real quick halation. If you want to see a more into depth tutorial about halation, you can check out my tutorial on my page. Change the threshold a bit. Then I'd like to change the strength. Secondary glow, dark brown. And then I like to dial back the global blend. The global blend is just like the total uses of the effect. Then I'm gonna show you something else and that's working with a lot. I'm gonna go back to the color space transform. And instead of using the timeline as output gamma, use oh go to Cineon film lock and i know it looks flat now but after the color space from i'm gonna add a new node name it lut right mouse go to lut and i'm gonna go with this lut and as you can see it's overexposed so i'm gonna dial back the gain in the highlights This is the before and this is the after. This is a quick introduction for color grading in DaVinci Resolve. I hope you guys learned something and don't forget to like and subscribe.